I'm Janine Duane. Welcome to our children's video on space station freedom. This video has three parts. My introductory message, primarily to teachers, a social studies part that explores presidential space policies, and the children's video, hey, what's space station freedom? The NASA logo and title appear before each part to guide you when you're fast forwarding. Having been in the classroom for many years, I know that it's the questions students ask which facilitate the learning process. In order to excite questions, there must be interest in the subject. This is why curriculum designers use the technique of weaving learning into a unit with subject matter of proven interest, such as the ubiquitous dinosaur. However, interest is heightened if the subject matter is also relevant. Studies have shown that the human role in space and the knowledge needed science, math, and technology is relevant in today's world and will be even more relevant in the future. By the time space station freedom is permanently occupied in the year 2000, the middle school child viewing this video today will be about ready to graduate from college. Will that child be working on space station freedom? Very possibly. This video is intended to be a classroom tool Space provides an excellent basis for curriculum and captures the student's imagination in pursuit of academic achievement and practical knowledge. Just as the imagination of the children in this video takes them to a living and working environment literally out of this world, teachers can design classroom activities in support of all disciplines. What things or experience would stimulate students in response to this videotape? I personally have been asked on many occasions the question, isn't human space exploration just for scientists and engineering astronauts? To the contrary, let's take art as an example. Art has been at the forefront and sometimes the genesis of most major scientific disciplines. A scientist who discovers the most wonderful things has done nothing at all unless the discoveries have been communicated to others. In this video, you will witness the artist's conception of things which could not be photographed because they did not really happen. Only the medium of the artist's imagination made them real for us. Another activity one may explore is the multinational aspects of the project. There are four international partners, Canada, the European Space Agency, which represents 13 countries, Japan, and of course, the United States. Each nation contributes to the program in a special way. Pins placed on each country on a map will show world participation. Curriculum possibilities on this idea seem endless. Speaking of maps, you may obtain a mission chart which plots the orbits of the shuttle and space station freedom missions. Because kids will want to know, can we see it? Where do we look? Get a copy of SPARK, the Shuttle Prediction and Recognition Kit from NASA, and follow the instructions. You and your students will be able to answer these questions while learning valuable mathematical concepts. Once inside freedom, the characters in our video experience some of the problems of living and working in space. Imagine being in a constant state of freefall. How would a shower work, a toilet? How would you get around or stay put? You can't lie down in space, so would you need a bed? Where do you get water? The questions seem endless. Freedom is described as a science laboratory in which experiments are performed which could not be performed on Earth. The students may wish to discuss the experiments described in the cartoon portion of the video. A wealth of interesting vocabulary is presented, such as solar arrays, tracking, avionics, truss, propulsion, and node, to mention a few. Finding definitions and investigating the technology associated with these words creates a knowledge base for students who will grow up in a time of an expanded environment beyond our planet. Ideas for classroom activities using the space theme across all disciplines have been developed by NASA's Education Division. Students are the benefactors of teachers' dreams. Let's keep this dream alive. The following segment shows a chronological series of three presidential pronouncements. Students may wish to research the impact of presidential leadership on space policy. 
Over the years, some presidents have championed the space program and had a strong influence on Congress to fund the various programs. Students may wish to study how funding for the space program is achieved, what steps must be taken by NASA to obtain the funds, and how they are spent on different programs. Now, here are three presidential pronouncements for study. to take longer strides. Time for a great new American enterprise. Time for this nation to take a clearly leading role in space achievement, which in many ways may hold the key to our future on Earth. I believe that this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the Earth. No single space project in this period will be more impressive to mankind or more important for the long-range exploration of space. Beginning with the next flight, the Columbia and her sister ships will be fully operational ready to provide economical and routine access to space for scientific exploration, commercial ventures, and for tasks related to the national security. Simultaneously, we must look aggressively to the future by demonstrating the potential of the shuttle and establishing a more permanent presence in space. I recently approved a national space policy statement which is being released today. Our goals for space are ambitious yet achievable. They include continued space activity for economic and scientific benefits, expanding private investment and involvement in space-related activities, promoting international uses of space, cooperating with other nations to maintain the freedom of space for all activities that enhance the security and welfare of mankind, strengthening our own security by exploring new methods of using space as a means of maintaining the peace. In 1961, it took a crisis, the space race, to speed things up. Today, we don't have a crisis. We have an opportunity. To seize this opportunity, I'm not proposing a 10-year plan like Apollo. I'm proposing a long-range, continuing commitment. First, for the coming decade, for the 1990s, space station freedom, our critical next step in all our space endeavors, and, and next, for the new century, back to the moon, back to the future, and this time, back to stay. And then, and then a journey into tomorrow, a journey to another planet, a manned mission to Mars. Each, each mission should and will lay the groundwork for the next. And the pathway to the stars begins as it did 20 years ago with you, the American people, and it continues just up the street there to the United States Congress, where the future of the space station and our future as a space-faring nation will be decided. And yes, we're at a crossroads. Hard decisions must be made now as we prepare to enter the next century. On the 30th anniversary of this extraordinary and astonishing flight, the way to honor the Apollo astronauts is not by calling them back to Washington for another round of tributes. It is to have space station freedom up there, operational and underway, a new bridge between the worlds, 
and an investment in the growth, prosperity, and technological superiority of our nation. What's a space station? It's a place where astronauts live and work. What do they do there? All kinds of neat stuff. Like what? I don't know. Let's go ask Dad. Dad, what's a space station? Well, let's see. You know that research building that's near the parkway? That's a place where engineers and scientists and technicians go to work, and the Space Station Freedom is going to be something like that, only in space. You mean those buildings in space? Well, they're very special buildings called spacecraft. They provide the same kinds of things that research buildings do, like air and water, heat, laboratories, and even bathrooms. Our neighbor, Mr. Walker, was an astronaut. Why don't we get him to tell us about Space Station Freedom? That's a good idea. He flew in the space shuttle several times and is working on the Space Station Freedom program. I'll give him a call and arrange it. Do you think we could get some friends to come with us? I'm sure Mr. Walker wouldn't mind a small group. Great. Hi, kids. I'm Hi, Mr. Walker. Walker. Kiara and Chad's dad told me that you wanted to uh, learn a little bit more about Space Station Freedom. So I'm really glad that you had a chance to come by the office today. What I'm going to do is uh, show you this model in some more detail. Then I'm going to show you a videotape. How would that be? Great. Great. Well, Space Station Freedom is a place in space where astronauts from many different nations around the world will come together to live and work. Now, this model will show you how the space station goes together and what the different uh, parts do. For example, there are four pressurized modules. Pressurized means they have a livable atmosphere, just like in the room around us now. Three of the four modules are laboratories. The fourth module is where the astronauts eat and sleep. This is the United States laboratory module. And back here are two additional laboratory modules, the Columbus Attached Laboratory, provided by the European Space Agency, and over here, the Japanese Experiment Module. Up here, we have the Habitation Module. That's where the astronauts will eat and sleep while they're working at the station. And down here, we have the pressurized logistics carrier. This brings the supplies up to the astronauts. Over here, you see the Canadian Mobile Servicing System. Now, this is a robotic system that is used to help assemble the space station, and it's also going to be used over the many years of operation of the space station to help maintain it. The International Space Station Freedom is a, a cooperative program with many nations involved. It's going to be a research facility in space where scientists and engineers from around the world share its unique resources. The modules are all connected to the truss. The truss is really the backbone of the space station. At the end of the truss are the solar array panels. The solar panels are where the sun's light is collected and turned into electricity. Now, inside the truss structure are various components that don't need to be within the pressurized modules. Now, that's like there are components under the hood of your car that don't need to be inside the car. Electricity is used by the modules like your home uses electricity. But here on Space Station, that electricity is direct current. Excess heat leaves the Space Station through the radiators. Now, that's like the excess heat from your car engine is radiated out through the radiator in front of the engine compartment of your automobile. Now, this antenna is where the information about the space station and about the research and the experiments going on there is transmitted back to Space Station Mission Control in Houston and to engineers and scientists around the country and around the world. Over here is where the space shuttle docks with the space station to bring up new astronauts and uh, fresh supplies every three months or so. 
Now, space station at its widest point, at the solar panels, is 243 feet wide. Its full length along the truss is 353 feet. That's longer than a football field. And when it is completed, it will weigh as much a, as a fully loaded 747 aircraft. This will be the largest spacecraft ever built. Now that's about all I can tell you with this model, but I've got a videotape that I want to show you that will describe how Space Station Freedom will be assembled in orbit around the Earth over a period of several years. Let's look. Space Station Freedom requires 17 shuttle launches to get all of the pieces into orbit. The first launch carries up one solar panel and part of the truss or backbone. The second flight delivers another truss section and two propulsion modules which contain small rocket engines used to keep Freedom flying steadily. The third flight transports a cooling radiator and the Canadian robotic arm. The fourth flight delivers another truss section containing bottles of liquid oxygen and nitrogen which are used to make breathing air for the crew. Next, the shuttle delivers a small pressurized room called a node, which contains equipment like the utility room in your house. The sixth shuttle flight brings up the U.S. laboratory. Now the station can be used for research, but the astronauts can only stay about two weeks because the habitation module isn't there yet. The seventh flight adds an airlock, which the astronauts will use to go outside in spacesuits. This flight adds another truss section with more radiators and antennas. The ninth flight adds a truss section and more propulsion modules containing rocket engines. The tenth flight adds another set of solar panels. On the eleventh flight, another node is brought up, giving freedom to utility rooms. On the twelfth flight, the shuttle delivers the Japanese experiment module, Freedom's second laboratory. And on the next flight, the European laboratory is brought up. Now, Freedom has three laboratories. The third solar panel is brought up on flight 14. On launch 15, a back porch is brought up and connected to the Japanese lab. The back porch is a place to mount experiments for looking at the Earth and the stars. On flight 16, the shuttle brings up the fully functional habitation module. Finally, the 17th flight brings a lifeboat to Freedom, called the Assured Crew Return Vehicle. Now, astronauts can come to Freedom and stay, even after the shuttle leaves. And now, let's look at all 17 flights, four years compressed into seconds. With a permanent crew on board, international research projects will be conducted on Space Station Freedom well into the 21st century. Well, what do you think, kids? It's great. Well, I think it was great, too, just having you here today and being able to tell you about Space Station Freedom and show you this videotape. So thanks very much for coming by. Uh, your folks are going to be here to uh, pick you up in just a little bit, so I'll be seeing you. Bye, Mr. Bye, Mark. Mark. Thanks a lot. Wasn't that neat? I finally found out about Space Station Freedom. I didn't know it takes all those shuttle flights to get it up there. My dad works on the Japanese experiment module. Wouldn't it be great if we could be astronauts working on Space Station Freedom? Yeah, yeah. that would be wonderful. Endeavor, this is Launch Control. Mission Specialist Status Check. Report. Kiara. Go! Chad. Roger, I'm go. Donovan. Ready. Atsushi. Hi, I mean go. Nina. I have to go chill. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, Roger. All mission specialists, go for launch. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. We have a go for main engine start. Six, five, four, three, two, one. We have ignition and liftoff.
three engines throttling back now to sixty five percent as it passes through the area of maximum dynamic pressure throttles now at sixty five percent APU's looking good velocity two thousand feet per second standing by for separation of these solid rocket boosters at two minutes and four seconds Separation of SRBs confirmed. Velocity now 4,200 feet per second, downrange 33 nautical miles. Freedom, this is Endeavour. We have you in sight. Estimate 15 minutes to rendezvous. Roger, Endeavour. We're ready to greet the new crew. Okay, kids. Let's take a spin around the station before we dock to give you a better view. Wow! Look at that! Yeah, and there's the U.S. Laboratory. Wow! Look at the Canadian Mobile Servicing System. There's the European Columbus Laboratory. Look at those solar arrays. There are the Japanese experiment modules. Freedom, this is Endeavour. We're starting our approach for berthing. Roger, Endeavour. Docking complete. Welcome Hi, kids. aboard, kids. Welcome aboard. We're here at last. All right, cool. Hi, kids. I'm station operator Grant Jackson. I'm working on a few electronics experiments. Welcome aboard. Hello, I'm payload scientist Dr. Sheldon McCall. I'm loading some special film to record my observations. Hello there. I'm station scientist Dr. Milton Smiley. I'm inspecting this rack prior to starting my test. I'm Commander Scott. Let me show you where you'll be living. You'll have to get used to floating and moving at the same time. We're now in the habitation module, or HAB for short. The HAB will be your living quarters. Who wants to try a bunk on for size? I do, I do. The crew quarters will serve as your bedroom and provide storage space for your clothing and personal effects. They have communications equipment so you can talk with your families on Earth. Now, who would like to try out the shower? I'll try it. The crew hygiene system is composed of a shower, toilet, plumbing, and equipment. Now, after that long trip to orbit, who has to go to the bathroom? I do! Well, as you can see, you're going to have to go and turn, and you'll need special instructions. How does it work? What's that thing? Where does it go? Forget it. <laughs> Sooner or later, you'll all be in here. Here is a health care area where you can exercise and monitor your health throughout your 90-day stay on board. And if you get sick, provisions are available to take care of minor accidents and illnesses. Have a seat in the galley. Here you'll be able to cook and dispense your daily meals using the galley's microwave and convection ovens, beverage dispensers, and food preparation counters. There's also a dishwasher so you can clean up your mess. After your meals, you can sit and talk and call home. Well, that completes the tour of the HAB. Tomorrow, the crew and I leave, and the station will be all yours to conduct your experiments. Kiara, you'll be taking my place as commander. Roger that. All right. I can't wait. I need some sleep. Let's get ready for our big day. Tomorrow is our day. Well, we're on our own now, fellow mission specialists. I'm going to use a special camera to photograph plant growth. We won't always have the shell to resupply our food in deep space. We're going to need to grow our own food on the moon and Mars. What are you working on, Donovan? Well, commander, I'm installing a modified computer board into my electronics experiment. I hope to discover a faster circuit using a special chip containing material developed in the microgravity of space. Good luck with your experiment, Donovan. What are you working on, Chad? I'm going to examine how weightlessness affects the growth of crystals. When these near-perfect crystals are returned to Earth, they may help to identify new ways to treat illnesses. How about you, Atsushi? I am recording my experiment. I'm curious about how a mixture of different foods react. That sounds neat, at Sushi. Keep up the good work. What are you doing, Nina? I'm getting my gear together to go up to the cupola. I'm going to get a good view of Earth in Florida. Tell us how it looks from the cupola, Nina. Wow, look at our Earth. I can see all of Florida. I want to keep it looking that beautiful. That's a view I won't soon forget. Well, fellow mission specialists, all good things must come to an end. Our mission is over, and we must leave our experiments for the next crew. 
It's time to catch a shuttle ride home. Ah, uh, dry in space station we don't pass too quickly. I must continue my work at school. I can't wait to tell the kids at school about those perfect crystals I grew. My computer test went well, but I wish I had more time. I know my sleep will always be filled with dreams of space station freedom and the view of Earth from the cupola. Assume your positions on board the shuttle. They say the re-entry to Earth is really spectacular. This should be exciting. Houston, go for deorbit burn. Roger. Houston, energy, ground track, and nav are go. Roger. Oh, I can see Edwards from here, Houston. It sure looks gorgeous. I'm sure it does, Rick. And Houston, uh, we're looking at uh, our landing site right now. Looks pretty good. Lots of folks waiting to see you land. And gear down. Come on, us. You ready to go home? No, Come on, let's go. We're running late. Let's tell our class to leave at school. Good idea. They're asleep or something. Oh, <laughs> <laughs>